Hello friends, it is Stasia and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to go over my August wrap up. First, we're gonna go over all of the books that I accumulated, then we're gonna go into some stats, and then lastly, we're gonna go through all of the books that I read in the order that I read them. First and foremost, we're gonna go into the haul. Um, this was a big haul. Uh, Rylan came to visit, so I bought a lot of books, but it's fine. So first, we're gonna go into all of the books that I got from like the publisher or something like that. Any books that were gifted in some way. I didn't buy it myself. Um, so the first one is Pretty Reckless by LJ Shen. I've not read anything by this author, but Ryland has and enjoyed it. So looking forward to this. Then I got Playmaker, which I would get to because I actually did end up reading this in the month of August. Then I got Let Him In. Um, not too sure what this is about. It seems like a horror sort of vibe, uh, but it releases in October. And then lastly, I got Sailor Moon. Um, this is the Eternal Edition and the first volume of that. Uh, my husband bought it for me. I don't actually remember why. It was very random, but he did end up buying it for me, even though I haven't completed collecting the like original version. It's fine. Uh, this one is really, really pretty, and I'm very happy to have it because I love Sailor Moon. Um, and then all of the books that I got myself this month, there are six books that I bought for myself. Uh, well, five books and one duet. I will actually not show you guys this because it is in my book shopping vlog with Rylan, all of these books that I got. So if you have not watched that already, um, I'll go ahead and leave it above and below if you want to see what I ended up getting. That's it for the haul because, you know, I got all of it literally when Rylan was here. Other than Rylan being here, I did not get any other books, but that is fine. So, some quick stats. Um, in the month of August, I ended up reading 11 books, which came out to 4,174 pages. Of those, four were physical, four were ebook, and three were audios. And my genres in August were nine romance, one fantasy, and one thriller. So that is that. Let us go ahead and get into the books that I read. So the first book that I read, um, I'm just gonna kind of go through them all together because I read these three books and they're all a part of the same series, even though it was a bit scattered out throughout the month, but I'll just go ahead and pop them up now. Um, and that is Twisted Games, Twisted Hate, and Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. This is books two, three, and four in the Twisted series. I tabbed and annotated all of them. I have an entire vlog about these. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you some quick tropes about the book um, and then my rating, but I'm not going to go into any further thoughts. So Twisted Games is about Bridget. She is a princess. There is also Reese, who is, ends up being her bodyguard after her current bodyguard has something going on. So she gets a new bodyguard and it ends up being Reese. Uh, forced proximity, royalty, forbidden sort of vibes. Um, I gave this book 3.5. Then there is Twisted Hate. This is enemies to benefits to lovers. Um, so this follows Josh, who is currently a doctor, and Jules, who is a former party girl who is currently studying for her bar exam to become a lawyer. Josh is Jules' best friend brother. So there's that, and I gave this one five stars. And then the last one we have is Twisted Lies. This follows Christian, who is like a CEO sort of guy. I'm not exactly sure what his job is, um, but he has like a tech company and Stella who is uh, basically like a social media influencer um, and this is a fake dating also forced proximity because Christian owns the building that Stella lives in and I gave this 4.5 stars so if you would like to know any further thoughts on any of these I have a vlog reading these three um, I do also have a vlog reading the first one Twisted Love, but that was last year, I believe, but I will leave that down below as well if you would like to check it out. Then the next book I read was also for a vlog and that was Disgrace by Brittany Cherry. I read this for the Mending Heart book club. So I gave this book five stars, not gonna go too deep on my thoughts, but I will tell you a little bit about the book. So 
This follows Grace. Her and her husband decided to take some sort of break after uh, they've been through a lot in their marriage. So on this break, they both end up going back to their small town. Her husband because he got a job there and her because she kind of just needs to kill some time before her new apartment is ready. So while she's back in town, she meets Jackson. Jackson is the town bad boy. He's a bad influence, apparently has a super rough past, uh, doesn't get along with anyone. And since it's a small town, obviously there's always rumors about what's going on, but Jackson and Grace end up finding themselves sort of relating to each other more than they thought they would. So that's basically what goes on here. Um, I found this book to be very sad. Uh, I teared up multiple times, but Rylan did not. So I'm not sure if you can really say how sad it is uh, because Rylan usually cries and I don't. But this time I cried and Rylan didn't. But I found it to be very heartbreaking. Um, but I gave it five stars. I do have an entire vlog on this as well if you would like to check it out. Now, there is an actual book that does not belong to a vlog um, and that is Fighter's Best Friend by A. Rivers. I gave this book 3.5 stars. Okay, this follows Gabe and Sydney. They have been friends forever. Sydney's currently um, a resident, I believe, at a hospital and Gabe is an MMA fighter. Um, so they've had a very long friendship since like high school or college or something like that and they're like well into adulthood now. So their friendship has always been like something that has been solid. Um, but one day they take a shot on whether or not there's more to the friendship. They kind of just go from there and see if it's like worth fighting for or what's going on with them. Uh, so I gave this book three and a half stars. Um, I did enjoy Gabe and Sydney, but I also felt like it was kind of long winded. I felt like there should have been better communication between our characters, considering they've had such a long friendship together. When it came to them being in a relationship, they seemed to have some sort of communication issues. They really didn't want to let the other person down. Um, I thought it would kind of be the opposite where they'd be like, hey, you know, like, let me check you out real quick because this is how I'm feeling. Uh, but they weren't as open with their feelings as I thought they were going to be. Uh, but I did love their banter. I loved their ease with each other when it was easy. It was nothing like super special, but I didn't like hate it or anything. It was kind of just like in the middle 3.5 sort of vibes for me. The next book I read was King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard. I really can't tell you too much about this book because it is um, the third book in a series. So yeah, I can't say too much about it, but I will say that I did give this book four stars. Um, it was definitely better than the second book, but in this book we got another point of view and I still don't completely understand why we got that point of view. I wish we got the point of view from someone different, but overall I really enjoyed it. Um, it definitely was interesting for most of the parts. Some of the parts dragged, but uh, I felt like it definitely heated up in comparison to what happened in book two. Um, and yeah, I was very excited to see what all of the characters were getting up to. And I'm very, very excited to see how it ends um, because the last book is huge, but this book kind of ends on a cliffhanger. So I'm excited to see it all wrap up. The next book I read was Tight Spot by Stacey Lynn. This is a football romance following Dawson and Haley. Um, so Dawson is in a bit of hot water. Um, he is kind of the like no settle down type, but he got into some trouble. So the general manager or someone of the team was like, hey, you should probably like show people that you can commit to a relationship so people can like you more because his contract is almost expiring or up, whatever the word is. Uh, so he wants to be a little bit more likable so that he's able to get signed again, basically. He ends up reaching out to, is like a matchmaking service and that the owner of that is Haley's best friend. So she sets them two up. They first start as like a no strings attached sort of thing. Haley just wants to get more experience. Dawson just wants to like clean up his image. Uh, so it starts off as no strings attached. Very quickly, it becomes more. Um, I gave this book five stars. I really, really loved Dawson and Haley. You could see like right away they had great communication with each other and like that ease of being together. Even though they were kind of just thrown together, um, they were both very understanding of each other's situations. They were both very sensitive of what was happening around them and like how their 
their actions also affected the other pe person, which I really appreciated. It was very quick to see why they got along. I love the banter and I just really enjoyed them as a couple. So yeah, I gave it five stars. Um, this is actually the third in the series, but like most sports romance, it was more of a companion. Uh, so I am actually really looking forward to going back and reading the first two and then continuing on with this series as they come out. The next book I read, I do have a vlog on and that is Gone Tonight by Sarah Pekanen. Um, I gave this book 3.5 stars. It was not my favorite, but I read it as a buddy read with Rylan. So that vlog is up, but I'll tell you a little bit about the book. The book follows Catherine and Ruth. Catherine is Ruth's daughter, um, and there's just a whole bunch of secrets. Ruth gets diagnosed with a uncurable disease, so Catherine realizes that she doesn't really know too much about her mother and her past. So Catherine starts digging into it lies come to the surface and she realizes like hey i'm not really sure what's true anymore uh, so it basically just follows ruth as she's trying to keep the past buried and catherine as she's trying to figure out more about her mother like i said 3.5 stars nothing special but yeah i do have a vlog on that next i read playmaker by piper lawson this is the third and final book in the king of the court series um i read both one and two and really enjoyed them this one was no different i ended up giving this one four stars um can't give you too much of the plot uh but i will give you a little bit of my thoughts so this follows Nova and Clay. This is their conclusion. Um, they've been through a lot between book one and book two, and I really liked how this conclusion wrapped up. I felt like we got a lot more insight on the characters as individuals rather than as a couple, which I think is also very important. And seeing them sort of figure out what's going on, what's working, what's not, uh, learning how to communicate with each other was just very nice and it was very healthy. Um, Clay goes through a lot in this book, I will say. Um, he spirals a little bit, so there is that. But I loved how in the end it all got wrapped up and how everything does end up. Uh, because in the middle there, you're kind of confused and you're like, hey, is this a happily ever after? I have no clue. But in the end, obviously, we do get their happily ever after. Finally, after the first two books ending on a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, but overall, I love the way Clay and Nova were able to communicate, especially looking back at book one and how they didn't really know each other. They didn't get off on the right foot um, and seeing how far they've grown. I really, really enjoyed their conclusion. Then I read One Last Shot by Nikki Castle. Gave this book 4.5 stars. This book follows Kane and Isabella. Isabella is a dancer who just moved to the city uh, for a kind of fresh start after an injury. And Kane currently lives in the city as a beginner MMA fighter, uh, just trying to figure out how to balance his life after having such a hard upbringing, um, kind of trying to get all the anger out and all of that. Um, so Kane and Isabella meet because they end up being neighbors. Isabella is happy. She loves it. She's trying to get her new life going. Kane is very grumpy. He doesn't trust people. He doesn't want to get close to anyone. He very much is like in his own world. Paths cross and eventually they can't really avoid each other. So gave his book 4.5 stars. I really, really loved Kane and Isabella. Um, I felt like some of it was a bit slow moving, but I really loved diving into both Kane and Isabella's past. Kane had a lot going on and I loved seeing him get through that. I loved seeing him be comfortable and able to open up to Isabella throughout the book. Um, I will say that there are some like plot lines where I didn't feel like completely satisfied with how they ended it. Um, but overall, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I also kind of wish that we got a bit more of the previous couples but we only got like a bit of the guys banter and the girls popping in and out but that's okay um overall Kane and Isabella they both had very hard things to get through um Kane especially he doesn't really know how to be a guy for Isabella uh, but Isabella isn't willing to give up on him so I really loved how easy it became even though it shouldn't have been easy uh Isabella was very very patient which I loved and Kane eventually became a better man because of it. So I loved that. And then the last book that I read was The Summer Girl by Al Kennedy. This is the third book and I did not read book one and two, but that's fine. Um, and I gave Summer Girl five stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. So it follows 
Cassie and Tate. Cassie no longer lives in this small town of Avalon Bay. Um, she moved away, but she came back for the summer because her grandmother is selling like the hotel or whatever that they have there. Uh, so she came back for the summer to just have it like one, one last time. And Tate is taking care of the property next door. So they run into each other quite a few times. It starts off as they are kind of attracted to each other, but they kind of nip it in the butt. And then they realize, you know what? No, it's fine. Like we just have one summer together. It'll be great. So they become like a friends with benefits sort of situation. So gave this five stars. I actually really, really loved Cassie and Tate. I thought Tate was actually hilarious. And seeing him almost get like a bit frustrated when he's trying to convince himself that he doesn't want Cassie was pretty funny. Um, I loved Cassie. She was like a very like stuck on her ways. It is what it is. She's just a go-getter sort of person. Although it took her like a little bit to get there. Uh, she was like in it she was having the summer of her life she was doing what she needed to do and i really really enjoyed it um i also really enjoyed their connection together i thought that together they were so fun i was just kind of looking forward to seeing what kind of situations they were going to end up in next um because they do get in quite a lot of situations there's there was also this part where there's like games on the beach and they're on opposite teams so just seeing them like get that that competitive streak with each other was also so entertaining um but the spice was also very great i will say that i loved the spicy parts as well because uh they they decide to just sort of have a summer fling but Overall, five stars and really, really enjoyed it. I definitely do think I'm gonna go back and read book one and two now. All right, so that was, I feel like a very quick wrap up. Not sure if I just said a lot less or what was going on. I think a big one was that I had a lot of vlogs, so I didn't talk about too much thoughts for a lot of these, but that's fine. All in all, 11 books read, not the best, not the worst, but I am happy with my reading in August. So that is that, my wrap up for August. Let me know what you read, if you've read any of these, if any of these are on your TBR, but that is all from me. So you can like, comment, and subscribe down below if you'd like. Anywhere to find me and everything mentioned will be linked in the description as always. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.